Hi guys, my name is Alicia and if you don't know who I am, I make thrifting videos every single week. And this week I wanted to bring you guys along to prep with me and eventually go to the hippie market. I've actually made quite a few hippie market vlogs or just market vlogs in general in the past and they're always really fun to document them. So if you guys want to see what it looks like, the work that goes into prepping for a market and being a vendor and eventually finding out how much money I actually end up making, then stick around and watch because I'm going to give you guys the full rundown on what it's like. Like I said, this is not my first market, but it is actually my first two day market. So we are going both Saturday and Sunday, so it's gonna be a hectic week, but I'm excited. So as per usual, any market prep pretty much starts with selecting what clothes I'm gonna bring. And I recently actually ended up getting this tagging gun, which is gonna hopefully make pricing things like a lot faster. So I'm excited to put this to use and give it a try. So let's do that. This is my inventory closet. It truly is the definition of an organized mess. And I'm gonna pull out this guy. Okay, as you can see, I already started hanging some things, but before we get too far, I did want to test out the tagging gun just to make sure it was easy to tag while they're hanging like this. But I want to show you guys my new business cards I got. The top one is the old one and the bottom one is the new one. I like it a lot better. I feel like it just matches with my current branding more. It's just going to make all my clothes look a little more professional, especially with the tagging gun because before I was doing safety pins, which took forever and didn't look that great. So I think this is going to be an upgrade. Okay, I'm gonna try tagging this for the first time. I honestly don't know what I'm doing, but I think you just have to stab it, press the little trigger, and then it should go in. So let's give it a try. Oh yeah, that totally worked. That looks so good with my new business cards. Like that looks legit. So glad to know that works so we can continue picking out the clothes. Okay, so it's actually been a couple days. It's already Friday today, so this is my last day to prep. As you can see, all the clothes I'm bringing are up on the clothing rack, and I actually just finished tagging all of them, which was honestly extremely fun. So the next step is going to be to actually like label everything with prices and sizing. I think this time around, I'm gonna do it slightly different. I just keep everything in a small, medium, large, extra large, yada yada. The second thing and the major thing I'm doing differently this time around is I'm actually going to be raising my prices, which technically I am, but technically I'm not. Basically how I do it is my Depop and Poshmark are all listed for the same price. And then everything on my Instagram, I list for $10 cheaper because I don't have to pay any fees. So when I originally started doing markets, I kind of had the same mentality and just kind of listed everything as my Instagram prices, but quickly realized that there is a huge fee I have to pay to go to these markets. And this time around, I think it's $125 per day. So it's not exactly cheap. And I think I'm kind of selling myself short with my prices and I really want this market to be really worth it. So I am a little worried because I know raising prices obviously, you know, usually means you're going to make less sales, but hopefully it'll even out. And I think I'm just going to go ahead with like a pen or Sharpie and just start, you know, filling out the numbers. So all this inventory is already listed on my Depop. So basically what I do is I go find the item listing and that's where I pull the price and the size information for each item because I usually don't remember them off the top of my head. And then I just go ahead with my Sharpie and write it in. I feel like there's definitely better ways to do this, but I don't know. This is just the fastest way that I found. Maybe one day I'll get like a stamp or something, but this is just how I do it. Once everything's priced, I then go ahead and put it all into laundry baskets for transportation purposes. This just makes the most sense to me since laundry baskets are designed to literally carry clothes and this just works for me. So usually I think I bring around like four or five and that usually holds most of my inventory. Next, let's pack my little utility box. This is just basically a box full of like essential tools that I may need the day of, scissors, tape that kind of stuff. And once that's packed, I'm pretty much ready for the next day. So the next day I arrived in Toronto at the location. It's actually this Curie's Artist old store that's unfortunately closed down, but it is an awesome location. This was my first time going here. And this is just a little time lapse of me and my mom setting up. She came to help me on the first day, which was so nice of her. It's honestly so helpful having somebody there with you. Okay, made it to the market. This is my outfit of the day. Let me show you my setup. Okay, so here is the setup. This might be one of my favorite setups yet considering it's so compact. The rug that I finally get to put to use, I think it's so cool, really defines the space. It's very compact, but I think it works. 
and then I have a little spot for stuff to put on the wall, which is pretty cool. So it just started, so hopefully it goes well. Okay, so it's just after one, and I did make my first sale, which is always exciting to get that out of the way. So hopefully the rest of the day goes well too. Lunch time. You hungry? <laughs> There's usually some point in the middle of the market where I sneak away and kind of take a peek at what other people are selling and just show off my favorite pieces. Of course, I was drawn to this patchwork stuff. This girl had the cutest handmade like two-piece sets. They were just all so adorable and so well made. And this vendor had the cutest like little intricate beadwork. It's just really cool to see how creative everybody is at this space. So update, there's one hour left of day one. We're pretty tired, but it's, it's been an okay day. So I'm hoping tomorrow will serve us better. So I've sold six things so far. Like I said, there's only one hour left. So the racks are still pretty full. Okay, we just packed up for the day and we just set it up like this temporarily till tomorrow just to do like a minor, minor put away. Okay guys, it's day two of Hippie Market. This is going to be my outfit of the day. I got a lot of compliments yesterday on my jacket. Yeah, people were so, so sweet about my jacket, like saying how nice it was. So we're gonna do a different outfit today. Just sweater vest, skirt. Well, this is actually a squirt, so. Oh, I gotta zip that. <laughs> but this is just a squirt, which is good because I can be more mobile, so. Let's head out for day two. We're back for day two and Emily's here today, which is so exciting. I just set up the booth. I brought some secret weapons with me. So I brought a few styles that I was saving for next week's story sale but I think I needed to whip them out today and hopefully we'll make more sales. There's a couple things here on the other side too and I have some more to replenish, so hopefully that helps. Okay, Emily, what do you think is gonna sell today? Okay, my initial thought was I was like, I'm gonna go through this as like what I want to sell, like the Oscars. I'm gonna pick who I want Oh, okay. Not, not, maybe not the most likely, but yeah, what you want. What do you okay. think are the real winners? I love this. I love this brand. I'm literally excited. Me too. Me too. I feel like I want like oh, this dress. I want this dress to feel so I want I know I think it's like some of the simple I don't know, some people buy simple things and some people buy eccentric things. And I want this one to sell because this one is for me. So. <laughs> True. I also decided to switch it up today and put all the dresses in the front because I think people are shopping more for spring. So these are gonna be the forefront today. Okay, we're one hour in. Well, we're not even one hour in, and I've already sold two things, so great start to the day. Hopefully that is telling for the rest of Sunday. Yes, we're bringing the good vibes. Yes. The good vibes. Cross our fingers. Lunch time. As you can see, the market was pretty busy. Like, there was a lot of people walking by, just not a lot of people stopping to browse or buy anything and this is kind of the reality of the market a lot of your time is just spent standing there waiting of course i didn't like talk to my neighbors and stuff but a lot of it is really just standing there okay there's a half an hour left of the market and as of now i've sold seven things so that's officially one extra thing than yesterday so not great but better so it's the end of the market i'm going to the car to get some stuff but i hate to say it but this was definitely not my best market so haven't done all the calculations yet but we'll see okay so it's been a few days now i am obviously back from the hippie market and we are finally at the point where i can tell you guys how much money i ended up making as i predicted it's not great could be worse but not great so let me give you the breakdown i actually ended up selling 13 items across the two days which 
is not good. It's about like six and a half items per day. In the past, I've sold close to double that in a single day. But from those 13 items, I ended up making a gross profit of $515, which sounds pretty good. But of course, I have many expenses to account for. The first one being the market fee, which was definitely the biggest at $250. I think this is probably the most I've spent on a market fee before just because it was my first two day event and pretty much more than half of my profits went straight to the market fee. Our next biggest expense was the cost of goods. So pretty much what I paid for each item that ended up selling. And that was about $89, which is pretty typical. Next up we have gas. So it cost me about roughly $30 to drive to Toronto and back for both days. After that is food. I ended up spending $26.65 on food for the weekend. Honestly, not too bad either. Then we have parking, which was $24. It was $12 per day to park, which honestly isn't that bad, so can't complain. And then our very last expense was my square fee. So basically I use a little square card reader to accept credit payments and that ended up being $6.37. So not too bad. Honestly, I kept all my expenses pretty low this time around, except of course the market fee, which I can't really control. Meaning that our grand total at the end of the weekend that I actually ended up making was $88.68. So not great <laughs> considering the sheer amount of labor that goes into prepping and, you know, doing this kind of event. I mean, financially, it's definitely not worth the work, which really sucks but every market is a gamble. And honestly, the fact that I came out of this making money, I'm super grateful for because I know that's not the case for everyone. So that is definitely a positive. Because I sold 13 items, that basically comes out to a $6.82 profit per item, which I love to make this comparison because on Depop, I make closer to 10 to even $20 profit per item. So obviously not great and not the optimal result of each of these items. So was this market a failure? No. Was it a success? Financially, no. <laughs> the one silver lining at the end of the day is always all of the people I get to meet, like all of my neighbors, the other vendors around me were super, super nice. So it was so nice chatting to them. And I always try to make the most of that, ask them questions about how they run their businesses, that kind of thing. And of course, getting to talk to the shoppers who come by and actually buy something or just come by to chat. There were actually two viewers that said hi that told me that they watch my videos. So if you're watching this video and that was one of you, just know that that means the world to me that you guys like came up to me and said something. And at the end of the day, those are the moments that make this all feel worth it. But you know, that is just the gamble of being a vendor. There is no guarantee that you're gonna make money or have a good day. And this time around, there was actually at least two or three other markets going on in the city so that absolutely had an effect on you know the disbursement of shoppers across the city another reason could be that my booth setup wasn't the most optimal in terms of like space i had a lot of inventory crammed into my small spot it wasn't the most like inviting open space but did that make me lose out on a few sales probably but i think not enough to justify paying double the price for a big spot. So I don't regret that decision, but I'm sure it definitely affected the amount of sales I made. So those are just probably a couple of the reasons why this market wasn't so much of a success. But with that being said, I am so glad I went with my instinct in increasing my prices because at the end of the day, I think that $10 difference wasn't really going to make it or break it for most people. And if I hadn't done that, I might've broke even or even lost money. So I'm very, happy that I did that and I think that is going to be the move going forward but yeah with that being said I <laughs> don't think I'm up to doing a market for a while but either way I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video of the whole process of what it's like to be a vendor and I hope you guys appreciate me being real with you guys because I think a lot of vendors like nobody really talks about the numbers and how much money we're all actually making. And I think a lot of vendors probably maybe get down on their, themselves because they think everyone else around them is having a super, super successful day, but I don't think that's the case sometimes. I just like to keep it real and show you guys what it's like. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next week.